All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Welcome to today's formal meeting of the Phoenix City Council for June 4th, 2014. We already had citizen comments, so now we will begin our meeting with an invocation. That invocation will be led by Reverend Patrick Stout from Community Church of Hope. Reverend Stout, please come forward. Everyone else, please stand. Please join me in prayer. Spirit of wisdom, we are glad to be in this place today to work together in cooperation. I pray that you will bless this body to be able to work with, with one another in wisdom and in truth. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Before the regular uh, formal meeting of City Council, uh, we are going to have a quick <coughs> meeting of the Tatum Ranch Community Facilities District Board, which is us. Uh, so I will now call the, to order the meeting of the Tatum Ranch Community Facilities District Board. May I have a roll call? Board Member DeCCO. <laughs> Board Member Gallego. Here. Board Member Gates. Here. Board Member Nowakowski. Here. Board Member Pastor. Here. Board Member Valenzuela. Here. Board Member Williams. Here. Vice Chair Waring. Chairman Stanton. Here. Uh, do we have a motion on the minutes from the July 3rd, 2013 special meeting of the Board of Directors? Weisner? So moved. Second. second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, can we have a uh, consideration, a motion on the consideration for the adoption of a resolution? Vice Mayor, do you have a motion on the adoption of the resolution? We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Roll call. Board member DeCCO. Board member Gallego. Yes. Board member Gates. Yes. Board member Nowakowski. Yes. Board member Pastor. Yes. Board member Valenzuela. Yes. Board member Williams. Yes. Vice Chair Waring. Yes. Chairman Stanton. Yes. Uh, we are completed with our business of the Tatum Ranch Community Facilities District. So that meet portion of this meeting is now uh, adjourned. We'll now begin our formal agenda for the City Council. Well, could we please call the roll for our formal meeting? Councilman DeCicio. Councilwoman Gallego. Here. Councilman Gates. Here. Councilman Nokowski. Here. Councilwoman Pastor. Here. Councilman Valenzuela. Here. Councilwoman Williams. Here. Vice Mayor Waring. Here. Mayor Stanton. Here. <coughs> Judy, would you, Judy is our interpreter. Uh, would you please introduce yourself for the audience for members who may need to uh, utilize your services? Buenas tardes, me llamo Judy. Soy intérprete de español. Si alguien necesita el equipo, por favor venga conmigo o con el personal de la ciudad. Gracias. Thank you, Judy. Uh, next, the city clerk will read the 24-hour paragraph. The titles of the ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinances number G5921 through G5931, S40848 and S40928 through S40954, and resolutions number 21230 through 21232. Thank you very much. Um, next is boards and commissions. Uh, is there a motion on the mayor's boards and commission nominations? Second. A motion a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We have a motion on, excuse me, any opposed? Passage unanimously. Next is. City Council Member Boards and Commission uh, nominations. Moved we have a motion on the City Council Member Boards and Commission nominations. Moved to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Councilman DeCicio, did you join us by phone? I did. Thank you, Mayor. We're about to vote on the uh, Boards and Commissions for Council Members. So we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, we do have individuals that are here to be sworn in for their service on Boards and Commissions. We have one. It is quality, not quantity today. Uh, Louisa Stark is here to be sworn in, so I'll come over and swear you in, and then yeah. come afterwards come, back, come behind the dais, and council members like to say thank you.
Uh, Mr. City Manager, I think this makes it official. Louisa has served on every board and commission possible that we have. I think you may have broken the record. And if we form new committees, she'll serve on that too. But thank you for your service to the people of Phoenix, Louisa. We really appreciate your commitment to the city. All right, I think uh, we're gonna, is this appropriate time to take things out of order or should we do it later? Can we take some, the item out of order dealing with the zoning case at 19th Street and Indian School? I think Councilman Pastor, out of respect for members of the public that are here on that item, wanna take that item out of order. Is that correct, Councilwoman? Is this a go Okay, so what, night, what number is that? 71. 71. So can we take 71 out of order? Any other requests to take items out of order today by members of the council? Thank you, Count, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, motion to suspend the rules and change the order of business to permit uh, item 71 to be heard first. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 71 will now be the item that will be heard before this council. Item number 71 is a proposed rezoning at 19th Street and uh, Indian School Road. Councilwoman, it's your pleasure, and like, it, it's your district, so how you wanna proceed? You wanna have a short staff presentation uh, and then hear from, there are three or four cards uh, here. Uh, that's one option, we can go right to the cards, whatever you'd like to do. I would like actually the public or the um, public first hear the cards and then Alan, or would you wanna present first? No, that's fine. Okay, so let's see, uh, we have, um, let's see, it looks like I've got two people in favor of, and I assume, I know you've been working very hard on this to try to find a compromise, so I assume it means they're in favor of the proposed compromise, and we have one individual who is opposed, Paul Barnes, and I'm not sure if it's based upon the original recommendation of the staff and village or the, uh, uh, the, uh, the compromise. But let's hear from, absolutely, thank you so much. Um, Lee Busenbark, are you here? Did you, I'm, would you wish to come testify? Up to uh, two minutes. And before, before you do testify, um, I know the councilman's office has been working with uh, neighborhood leaders from the immediate area as well as neighborhood leaders representing uh, neighborhood interests around the city as well as the representative of uh, the developer. Are you aware of the proposed compromise? Yes. Okay, please, so you're gonna testify on that. Yes. Please, go ahead. Uh, my name's minutes. Lee Busenbark. I live at 19th Street in Montecito, which is in the neighborhood. And I've been working with my neighbors on this whole development. And I appreciate every council person who's taken the opportunity to meet with us. First and foremost, I wanna say that this is a compromise reached um, between the community and the developer. And since this site is under the Squaw Peak Parkway specific plan, I wanna make sure that no other neighborhoods, that their specific plans are set aside based on the decisions and compromises that we've made. Each community is different, each site is different, and this one we have deemed appropriate for our location, and we're happy to have it coming into our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you for your, your testimony. So you wanna make sure I got on the record that this is not meant in any way to affect any other specific plan Correct. in your neighborhood or anywhere else in the city. Correct. A point well taken. Uh, you. Mr. Paul Barnes, you should provide the testimony next and then we'll hear from Jerry Jacobs. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. As I said from the back there, I do support the compromise and uh, there's several individuals I'd like to applaud that have worked so hard on this project. Uh, first of all, obviously, uh, I applause uh, Councilman Pastor's office for supporting the R4 compromise that was recommended by the Petersview Neighborhood Association. And I applaud Guadalupe Perez Carrillo and the residents of the neighborhood for organizing so quickly and so efficiently, as well as recognizing the political reality of how rezoning currently works in the city of Phoenix. I applaud Lee Busenbach for preparing one of the best neighborhood presentations I have ever seen that presents clear compelling evidence for anyone wishing to be objective as to why the applicable rezoning application should not be approved. I'm talking there about the original application. I applaud Judy Leon for exercising such care and concern for the residents of the trailer park that will be displaced by the pending rezoning. I applaud, this is gonna surprise people, I applaud Catherine Sprague for arguing so persistently 
regarding the aesthetics on the project, and the project clearly is out of character with the neighborhood, and this is why she's been so persistent. In closing, I feel that this case represents a great deal that is wrong, a great deal that is wrong with rezoning in the city of Phoenix in regards to infill projects abutting long-established single-family neighborhoods. And I'll take that up at a different time and a different place uh, in detail. My last word is that I hope that Mr. Curley and his client will be able to work on the proposed setback uh, adjacent to Catherine's project and see if that can't be uh, increased. And again, uh, I, I really appreciate all the hard work that uh, uh, Councilwoman's Pastor's office has done on this project. They've met several times, and uh, I think without that and her understanding of the situation that perhaps maybe the developer would not have been uh, as amenable to this compromise. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Paul. Mr. Barnes, Jerry Jacobs, did you provide testimony? You know, but you're in favor of the compromise? Okay. So, Councilman Pastor, it's up to you whether you want to hear any kind of staff presentation at this point. It looks like all the people that came to testify were aware of the compromise and gave testimony based upon it. So, you, and you have the, um, uh, the staff sheet about um, propo proposed motions as well. Go ahead. The floor is Correct. Yours. So I would like Alan to go through this process because it's been a long process and we, I am, I, I'm a process person so I'm glad that we got to where we, we, we got to into the compromise. So Alan, if you could please. Sure, uh, mayors uh, and council members. This is a rezoning request for 7.03 acres. Uh, you can see up on the, the aerial slide there exactly where the parcel is. It is surrounded by uh, residential uh, to the north and to the east. Um, and then single family residential and to the south is uh, commercial and, and office uses and then uh, to, the, to the west is uh, more single family residential. On the, the next slide you can see the uh, close up area, one more slide up here, you'll see the, the zoning uh, sketch map that shows the surrounding zoning patterns for the area. So you'll see the site has a mix of C3, uh, C2, uh, fairly intense commercial zoning, and then R3 multifamily already on the, the back of the parcel. So that is one of the, the reasons why uh, this project is, uh, is uh, proposed to be supported by staff, um, that it already has some intense zoning on it. Um, the next slide shows the, the site plan for it. And uh, originally they did come in and request R5 zoning. Um, and uh, a maximum height of 56 feet. And through uh, the process, um, you know, the next slide shows the elevations. Um, so this is the main building that sits in the middle of the parcel where the heights would, uh, would have gone up to 56 feet as originally proposed. And the next slide shows the carriage units that surround it on 19th Street, Devonshire. Now they're gonna uh, shift some around to 20th Street as well. Uh, those carriage units have a maximum height of, of 22 feet. Um, with that, the next slide, uh, I believe, shows uh, some items that uh, Councilwoman uh, Pastor uh, was integral in putting together uh, meetings to work with the neighbors and the community to uh, have neighborhood meetings on uh, February 18th, May, May 10th, May 17th, uh, May 27th, then again on May 28th, and then <coughs> May 30th. And then May uh, 31st through 6-1, residents and staff worked on issues through the weekend uh, to make this uh, happen. And then also on 6-2 and 6-3. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions and go from there. Yeah. Council, any questions or comments? Uh, any questions, yep. members of the council? Councilwoman. Well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Peter's View Neighborhood Association. Uh, they became very active in this process, and I'm glad, and not necessarily wanted this to be the process of, of how to really get the neighborhood engaged, but they got engaged. And so I want to thank Guadalupe, who I met, uh, I think a month, a month and a half ago when she came to a meeting and said, hey, this project's coming up, and I wanted to see what the process is. Lee and, and Julia for being advocates for uh, your neighborhood, but also for the mobile home uh, area um, and Catherine and Catherine uh, throughout this whole process I want to acknowledge her because she, at, throughout this whole process everybody had a voice and everybody was heard at many different uh, time periods and and um, meetings and so um, I also like to thank Gigi and Paul 
for your efforts in, um, in being advocates for neighborhood and the neighborhood association. So I also like to thank you and still providing a vision and the guidance of, of quality neighborhoods. Um, Alan, thank you because I got to you and said we got we to gotta see how what we can do. So uh, thank you for all your efforts and also my staff. I just want to let you know that uh, within, what was it, Tuesday, I believe, uh, from last Tuesday to now, we have been working fast and furious to at least get to a compromise. And uh, we all work together. I want to uh, thank uh, the developer and Mr. Curley and everybody else that was part of it, uh, because as I had stated in the neighborhood meeting, uh, neighbors are uh, developers and establishments are part of the neighborhood and they do bring economic development and it's just a matter of getting into a room and really working hard to get to where everybody has a win-win so I do want to thank uh, the developer in in also going through this process they're not uh, as many of you know I'm new to this council and uh, this process was probably a whole new process for city staff and developers and neighborhoods in the sense of how I, I wanted certain things. From the very beginning, uh, when I first met uh, with Mr. Curley and uh, the applicant, I was very strong and very clear that I wanted the neighborhood's voice to be heard and uh, to work together, but I also wanted to make sure our, our residents that live in the mobile home area uh, that were going to be displaced to be taken care of in the sense of with dignity and respect and also have a plan in moving them into a new area. So I also want to thank the owner of the mobile home park for going way far beyond than what I thought was going to happen. And so uh, with that, at the end of the day, I also like to thank my staff who uh, Literally, uh, Monday, I had, uh, there was a neighborhood meeting called together Monday, and then Tuesday, there was a zoning, a planning, a village, where we cleared some things up in the village. We had to clear some items up in the village. But last night, I said, I am still not comfortable. I want to know where, where our mobile home residents are on this. And so my staff went out last night at 6 o'clock and went door to door and spoke to all the residents that were home and got a report and we were able to at 1:30 speak to the owner of the part of the mobile home area and say here are some of my concerns and we were able to work things out what I also want you to know is that uh, there is a contract uh, between the developer and the owner of the park that all the items that were given to the homeowners will be followed through so I want to make that assurance to our neighbors that we're very concerned about that. So I'm very proud of all the work that everyone did, and I am going to make a motion to deny as filed and approve R4 per the memo from Alan Stevenson dated June, June 4th, 2014, and adopt the related ordinance. We have a motion. We have a second. Any additional comments by members of this uh, uh, council? M Mayor. Uh, a quick one. Mayor. Oh. Councilman, go right ahead. Is it the CCL? Mayor. Go right, go right ahead, Councilman. Oh, yeah. I think I just want to thank uh, Councilwoman uh, Pastor for all the hard work she put into this. I mean, you may be new to the council, but you handle this like a true veteran, and you put together what could have been a very ugly case um, and one that could have been just really tough for everybody and was able to with all that hard work you put into it was, was able to make it easy for everybody to work together uh, that had the potential to being a very tough one and you just made it look very easy so congratulations councilwoman pastor for putting this together and making it easy for the rest of the council as well and for protecting the rights of the neighbors and the individuals that live in that area and at the same time, recognizing the fact that this does bring in economic development, brings in a good project to a community. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you very much. Other comments on this council? Councilman Valenzuela? I, actually, all I was gonna do is uh, commend 
Councilwoman Pastor and, and her team. I, I agree. I think, uh, you know, the, the hard work was, uh, it was, it was evident every time you, you talk with someone from city staff or uh, anyone who's working on whatever side of the, of the, the situation or the issue, uh, it was clear that uh, Councilwoman Pastor was uh, committed and speaking with everyone, bringing everyone together. And, you know, I mean, you know, Laura is a really good friend. So on top of it all, I'm just really proud of the way she, you, you handled this, Councilwoman. And, and I agree, you handled it like a, a true veteran. And, uh, and I certainly learned, uh, you know, as someone who's very process oriented also, and, uh, you know, who works in the community and work with everyone who, you know, would allow me to, uh, you know, it was, it was just great to see and congratulations. I want to make a clarification Please. on my on my motion. It's per the revised memo. Well, in that case, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so can I get a, uh, it's per the revised memo. We got it, it's, okay. it's uh, for the record and we're, we're good to go. So we have a motion, we have a second, any other comments? Uh, I also just, uh, as mayor, want to say, uh, uh, I, you and your team, uh, Councilwoman, just rolled up your sleeves last week. It has been very, very impressive to, uh, to watch. I also want to say thank you to, to Lee and Guadalupe and the other uh, leader from the immediate area who really did a great job advocating for uh, your neighborhood, the interest of your neighborhood. Uh, the work you did uh, over the last uh, few weeks and months is really going to set the right, uh, uh, I, th I believe, the, <coughs> the right message for other development, redevelopment projects that are really coming. So congratulations, Councilwoman, you and your team. Congratulations, leaders of that immediate neighborhood. Great work. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Uh, next, we'll go back to our regular um, order of agenda. Next item on that agenda Hello. is um, Just the our budget part. items. Do we need a suspension of the rules for the budget items? All right, so if we suspend the rules, uh, so that we can hear the budget items. Does anybody, Vice Mayor, do you want to make that motion? Motion, uh, motion to suspend the rules and change the order of business to permit the holding of public hearings and adoption of the 2014 to 2019 capital improvement program and the tentative 2014 2015 budget items. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, the next item will be then item number two, which is a public hearing on the proposed 2014 through 19 capital improvement uh, program. I will now open the public hearing. Are there any cards on that item? We have no cards on that uh, uh, item. So I'll, is anyone here for, to provide testimony on item number two, public hearing 2014-19 capital improvement program going once, going twice. The public hearing is now uh, closed. Item number three is adoption of the 2014 through 19 capital improvement uh, program. Do we have a motion on item number three? Motion to approve item three. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any comments by members of this council? Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Item number four is a uh, public hearing on the proposed 2014-15 annual budget of the City of Phoenix. I will now open that public hearing. Do we have any cards on item number four? We have no cards from the public on item number four. Is anyone in the audience here to provide testimony on the proposed uh, adoption of the tentative 2014-15 annual budget? Anyone here to provide testimony on that item? Going once, going twice. The public hearing is now closed. Our next item on the agenda is item number five, adoption of the tentative 2014-15 uh, annual budget of the, of the City of Phoenix. Do we have a motion for a member of this council on item number five? Mayor, uh, I would move to approve um, the tentative 14-15 annual budget ordinance S4-928. Second. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. We have comments from members of the council. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. 
No. Nowakowski? No. Pastor? Yes. Valenzuela? Yes. Williams? Yes. Waring? No. Mayor Stanton? Uh, yes, Councilor DeCicia, this is the, uh, the proposed annual budget, 2014-15. You voted yes. Did you intend to vote yes? No, I'm sorry. I thought it was the capital. I could, I could barely hear No problem. Hear I apologize. Right here. No, you the answer is no. Okay, so Councilor DeCicio uh, is a no on that, uh, on that item. Uh, and so I think the item passes on a five to four uh, vote. Next item on the agenda is adoption of the tentative 2014-15 capital funds budget. Do we have an item on uh, motion on number si item number six? Mayor, uh, I would make the motion to approve uh, and adopt the tentative 2014-2015 capital funds budget ordinance S. Four zero nine two nine. Second. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Comments by members of this council on the capital funds budget. Roll call. Decisio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. That item passes unanimously. Item seven is. Proposal to adopt the tentative 2014-15 reappropriated funds budget. Do we have a motion on item number seven? Motion to approve item seven. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments on this council? Any cards on that item? Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes, that item passes unanimously. Next uh, portion of today's agenda will be revolving, uh, involving liquor license applications. Uh, Vice Mayor, do we have a omnibus motion on liquor licenses? We do, but one second. Yes, I move items eight to twenty, number eight to twenty-three. Second. All right, we have a motion. We have a second. Approval on the items eight through twenty-three. I have some cards here, not wishing to speak. I'm going to make sure they're all in favor of the proposed motion. Mark Roth on eight, number eight. Ben Araha on nine. Mary Abrokta on item fifteen from the Okatio Glen Neighborhood Association. Thank you for taking the time to attend today. Good to see you, uh, David Moreno. Um, do not mark if you are in favor or opposed item 19, David. Are you in, in favor of it? Yes, I'm in favor. Favor, okay, perfect. And then uh, on item 21, the applicant, I assume, is in favor is Punya Koraila. I hope I pronounced that correctly or close to it. Thank you for Are you in favor of the proposed item, I believe? Yes. Excellent. We have a motion on items 8 through 23. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? passes unanimously. Item 24 on today's agenda is a liquor license in which staff is recommending that we disapprove. It's called Club Silverado and Restaurant. It's in District 5. Councilman Valenzuela, Councilman Valenzuela, how would you like to proceed? And we do have a few cards uh, on the item. Do you want a staff report first? Uh, this is for 24. Item 24. Right. Uh, uh, Mayor, I know we have some of our neighborhood leaders here with us. We have the applicant here. Uh, the applicant has asked if, if we would continue this, giving the applicant an opportunity to meet with the neighborhood leaders. Uh, after discussing this with the neighborhood leaders, everyone is okay with that, so I'd like to make a motion to continue. Second. We have a motion and a second to continue. Mary, are you okay with the continuance? Caitlin, are you okay with the continuance? You're opposed to the item? Uh, so the, uh, the motion on the table is not to either in, in favor or opposed. It's a continuance so that the applicant have a time, will have a chance to meet with those, particularly in opposition, including yourself, and then we would hear the item substantively at a future meeting. Are you okay with a short continuance to give the applicant time to meet with you? If not, it's perfectly fine. You just, you, now would be the time to, te to come testify, but only on the issue of whether we should grant them how, many, how much time? Went to what, what next meeting? Uh, yeah. What? June what? 18th. So it would, be a, it would continue until June 18th. It'll give you a second if you want to talk it over. That's fine. Actually, my thoughts are at this moment, 
Would you like to, maybe you should. Uh, yeah, please come uh, to the microphone over here to the right, I apologize. Yep. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. My name is Catalino Prifescu. It's the first time when I come on this Thank kind you for of being meeting. Here. Glad you're uh, here. Uh, sorry for my English. It's my no second problem. language. No. I live in the bad neighborhood. Everybody knows the route of 27th Avenue have an increased rate of crime. Uh, Club Silverado, it's very bad for our neighborhood. And they get a chance to talk with me. Instead of that, in the last three weekends, there was twice gunshots behind my house. I, I feel afraid for my life in this moment. Okay, so right, the, the, the question on the table that we're gonna be discussing is whether to delay this vote for a two week period. Um, and if you're, if you're, it sounds like you're opposed to us doing that, you want us to vote today and get it over with. I, I don't see why we have to oppose. I already submit two complaints to the city of Phoenix Nobody contacted me, nobody did anything. I, whenever I called the police to disperse them at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, the, they just let them go. Okay. So I don't see why we keep going like that. Excellent, uh, thank you. The first time when they approve this restaurant, they blame on me why I didn't come to say, to oppose for the restaurant to open in the first place, but I didn't know what is gonna be. We have two other bars in the area. We have a lot of kids in the neighborhood, apartments. I own a care home with people with traumatic brain injury. I live just 50 feet away of them. They broke the window of my uh, handicap van and they said they are not responsible for them customers. Every weekend, it's a nightmare. I don't know why we have to go longer with this. Thank you very much. So, you. Right, and I wanna make sure it's clear. Uh, the motion that the councilman representing the area has made isn't in favor or opposed. Uh, he wanted the opportunity for a uh, representative of the restaurant and bar to meet with the nearby neighbors, obviously including you. I'm guessing based upon your testimony that the councilman and his professional staff will be meeting with you to talk about some of the uh, neighborhood issues, including crime issues that are going on in your, in your neighborhood. Uh, but right now we're gonna be voting on uh, whether to continue the item for a couple weeks and your testimony is now for the record, so you can leave it at that, or if you're able to come back in two weeks and again provide live testimony, that would be very, very helpful. Thank you for being for coming down, I appreciate it. So the motion on the table is to continue this for uh, two weeks. Uh, I, I should also note that the uh, applicant is here, uh, but not wishing to speak, uh, Lorena Carbajal. Mayor. Council, please. Actually, according to the note here, I, I misspoke. It's actually July 2nd would be the continuing uh, date and to the, to the gentleman who just spoke. Uh, y yes, we will, be, we will be reaching out. We have been working uh, closely with your police commander. We meet with your police commander on a monthly basis. It's a standing meeting uh, and you know, along with your neighborhood leaders and uh, obviously you know, crime prevention and suppression must remain our number one priority. Uh, so we'd love to sit down with you uh, out of, uh, so, but I, I'll tell you what, uh, I understand that it could be difficult to come out to these meetings, especially, you know, in the middle of the day, uh, we will be sure to, uh, to keep your, uh, your, your comments on, uh, the record, uh, we, uh, Kelly Dalton is my chief of staff who will make her way over to you to exchange information, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, out of respect for the neighborhood leaders that we've had a discussion with uh, today, uh, we're, I'm, I still would like to make a motion for a continuance on the second. I ask that the applicant not waste time and meet with these neighborhood leaders. They're very organized in this uh, part of the, the district and, and frankly some of the most organized neighborhood leaders in the city. Uh, don't waste uh, your time please and, and uh, meet with our neighborhood leaders uh, sir, this is not a motion to approve. This motion is just to to continue. I no, sir, that's not. That well, we'll ask the professional staff after you know through the motion to maybe a chance to speak with uh, 
Mr. Pritzku uh, and explain the process and also have a chance to meet, have him meet with the appropriate law enforcement folks to talk about some crime issues in the neighborhood. Okay, so the motion is a continuance till July 2nd. Second. The, I assume the second, seconder is okay with that change? I'm fine with it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. All right, uh, so we, that item will be back on our agenda in just a few weeks. Next item on the agenda is item number 25, which is a ratification of planning commission action. Do we have a motion on item number 25? Move approval. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, so I have a few cards here. Uh, not wishing to speak, I have Ralph Frobe, who is, he supports denial, and I'm, I'm confused. The motion was in favor uh, of Planning Commission action. Mr. Frobe, are you opposed to the Planning Commission action? No. I don't want to go into those groups. Okay. Okay, um, the motion I believe is in favor of the Planning Commission action. So if you disagree with the Planning Commission action. Mr. Stevenson, bring uh, clarity Mayor, to my Council, obfuscation. The, the Planning Commission recommended denial. So this is a ratification of the Thank denial, you. which is why he's supportive. Okay. Thank you so much. So uh, you support the motion made by Councilman Williams. John Dersanu, Dersanio, uh, also in the same position. Linda Colino is also in favor of the motion, therefore denial, which was supported by the Planning Commission. We got it. I am clearly more confused than you, but now clarity has been brought to the situation. So, uh, so Councilman Williams has made a motion to support Planning Commission action, which is denial. Got it. All right. We have a motion. Do we have? And we had a second. All is second. roll call. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. That's good news. All right. Good. All right. So next item is item 26 through 28. Uh, now is the time and place for the public hearing regarding items 26 through 28, the proposed Broadway Road. Avenida Rio Salado project, areas 3A, 6A, and 6C annexations. I will now open the public hearing. Are there any cards on items 26 through 28? No cards on 26 through 28. Is anyone here to provide testimony on 26 through 28? Well, we will not be voting on these items. Is that correct? I think we're just taking a public hearing. Okay. Any, is there any member of the public here to provide public testimony on the proposed annexations uh, for the Avenida Rio Salado project? Going once, going twice. Today's public hearing is now closed. Next item on the agenda will be our G ordinances, S ordinances, and resolutions. And we'll first start out with a omnibus uh, motion if we can. City Clerk, are we ready? Okay, Mayor, we have cards on items 38, 46 through 48, 54, I'm sorry, 53, 54, and 57. All right, with that, Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Yes, I move that items 29 through uh, 62. Sorry, I move that items 29 through 62 being ordinances number G-5921 through G5928, S-4084, S-4093-1, through S-4094, and resolution 21231 be adopted, except items 37, 38 in its entirety. Uh, and we have conflicts, I think, on A, E, A, F, and A, G. Yep. 46, 47, 48, 53, uh, 54, and 57. Uh, and that's it. Okay, uh, that's our omnibus motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any comments by members of this council? Roll call. DeCicio. 
Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Next item is item number 37. Do we have a motion on 37? Move item 37 be adopted. Second. We have a motion to second. Councilwoman Gallego, do you want to declare a conflict? No, I have a few comments on 37. Oh, I'm sorry, it's comments. I apologize. Um, okay, uh, so the motion is in favor of 37. We have a second. Councilman Gallego, what are your comments? Um, item 37 has to do with our uh, city's cranes and some of the, can you hear me? No. You cannot no. hear me. Let me move closer. All right, I will speak more loudly. There you go, there you go. Thank you. Um, during our budget hearings, we had many suggestions from employees and one of them was to look at the crane program for efficiencies that we had some cranes which were used for a few hours per year and that they might, we might be able to share uh, cranes between departments. And I'm very happy that we're gonna be doing a, something like a, a shared motor pool with our cranes. So the staff is looking at now heavy equipment and seeing if we can share those materials between departments and gain efficiencies that way. So very glad that we're being responsive to the comments we received from our employees and that we continue to look for efficiencies. So thanks staff for working with me on this item and making sure we're doing a good job with the taxpayers' money. So appreciate the ability to study this further and make sure we are doing a good job for both our employees and taxpayers. Thank you very much, Councilman. And that was your uh, movement that got this going in the right direction. Thank you for doing that. So we have a motion on 37. We have a second. Those comments noted. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Item number uh, 38. Why don't we do uh, all, of it. all of it, holding out the, uh, the items in which we have conflict, so we have to vote separately on. So let's do a motion on 38. I move uh, item 38, holding out A, E, A, F, and A, G. Second. We have a motion on 38, uh, holding out uh, the items noted by the vice mayor. Mr. Vint, Pat Vint, you have up to two minutes to provide testimony. This is on our payment ordinance. Yes, I am uh, Pat Vint, and as you noticed, uh, came in late, was held up. But this uh, item 38 here, it always just gets slipped by as if it's nothing. It's only uh, $37,861,000 that you're all gonna say it's okay. City staff supposedly knows what they're doing. But like I say, I have to bring in what happened, why I'm not here earlier. We had a meeting with Ray Dovalina from the streets department and it went over time, but we're talking about $100,000 there that the city give away and give our property away, a main thoroughfare. And you act as if it's nothing. Just whatever the staff says, it's okay. It's not okay. Someone has to be accountable and responsible. And Ray Dobelina and myself, we couldn't agree, so I said we're going to court. Every one of you will be, a, will be a summoned into court, whatever they do, because you're all part of it. You just set up there as if you're 12 gods or something, and whatever the staff said, it's all right. It's not all right. Someone, starting with the mayor down, has to answer to the public. In that chain of command, you still haven't tied the public to your position, to Ed Zerker's position. And it's the previous city managers that made this mistake. And they just quit, walk off three or 400,000 in their pocket, quarter of a million dollars each for retirement, the rest of their life. And it's a disaster. So is that, we didn't get any morning of another few seconds, that's it? You can finish your point if you want. So anyway, you're gonna to have to start doing your job and accepting accountability and responsibility. Ed Zerker kind of got started last week and asked a few people to call me and have meetings. Ray Dovalina is the only one. But the neighborhood of planning and zoning department, which there was an individual here a little bit ago, that he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Vint. Thank you for the testimony. All right, so we have uh, a motion in favor of item 38 with the uh, uh, certain items held out. We have a second. Roll call. 
DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor, next items. Move item AE for approval. Why don't you do all but once, I think, right? Thank you. Okay, and she'll just, okay. Yeah. Uh, move item AE, AF, and AG for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Gallego. I'd like to declare a potential conflict on items AE, AF, and AG. Thank you very much. So we have a motion, second. Uh, Councilman Gallego noted a potential conflict and will not be participating in the vote. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Next item, Vice Mayor. I move item 46 for approval. Second. All right, 46. Uh, it, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, you wanted to provide testimony on the second error? All right, so uh, Mr. Clark, this is a award of housing opportunities for persons with HIV AIDS job readiness employment services contract up to two minutes. Good Thank you, Mayor and Council. I just want to make it quick as a resident of Phoenix. Uh, I just want to congratulate the city of Phoenix for after all of the stigma and the discrimination that took place against people with HIV AIDS for, for your uh, hopefully passing this uh, so that they can be treated fairly and have employment after so many millions have died and it was just a movie on about how people with HIV AIDS, all of the politicians didn't want to listen, they ignored it till a whole, a lot, almost a whole generation of people were lost. So I thank you and I strongly support this and I hope you'll vote yes on it. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. We have a motion, we have a second. We have, we have a motion, yeah, roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Williams. Yes. M Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Item 47, Vice Mayor. Move for approval item 47. Second. A motion a second, Mr. Clark. Do you want to provide testimony on item number 47? Not on this one. Okay. Roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Williams. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Stanton. Yes. So the item passes 7248. Uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, move approval item 48. We have a motion on 48. Do we have a second? Second. We have, uh, Mr. Clark, you have to provide testimony. This item has to do with the food banks, food bank contract. Thank you, Mayor and Council members. My name is Leonard Clark and I live in this beautiful city of Phoenix. Uh, I, I do, of course, want you to pass this, but I just want also you to recognize and our fellow citizens to recognize that it's been reduced 25% because we were wrong in saying we must repeal the taxes, all taxes are bad, and as a society, we just can't have taxes. Now, when it comes time for people, not deadbeats, not people who aren't willing to work, who need food, uh, the, the residents of Phoenix, those places, uh, St. Mary's Food Bank and the rest supply food to people who are hungry in Phoenix uh, are gonna have less because we don't have this tax. So we must not, I hope, succumb to this whole Goldwater uh, stigma, uh, you know, kill the baby in the bathtub, horrible as it sounds, mentality that we should have no taxes because now this is what we get, reduced uh, funding, reduced food for the hungry of Phoenix. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh Mr. Clark, roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Uh, passes unanimously. Next item, Vice Mayor. Move approval item 53. We have a motion on 53. Do we second. have a second? 53. Uh, is uh, agreement with Xerox uh, for data entry services. Ms. Barker, did you provide, provide testimony on this item? Good to see you. Sorry. Good afternoon, Council. Oh, that one's not on? Yeah. 
How about this? All right. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Diane Barker, District 7. I'd just like to make a statement. It's been my experience in dealing with the Supreme Court in this, and it was an issue with Scottsdale that you really need to watch what is on that record there. And I think that uh, I've been told that uh, maybe the city courts knows this, that if the person finds an objection on there, they need to work through the courts to get that. You, you just can't get the Supreme Court to change anything on there. But I think as far as Xerox goes, they owe it more. They were giving the money to Xerox, and then Xerox has a collection agency. The collection agency, you can't get a hold of them, and I'm not the only one that complains about that. But what I'm saying here, I'd like the city of Phoenix, we've got a good judge over there, to make sure that the records are straight and that the procedure to correct it is not one of these long drawn administrative things. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Barker. Uh, item 53, roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Item 54. Move approval item 54. Second. We have a motion and a second on 54. Mr. Leonard Clark, you want to provide testimony on 54? No problem. That's all right. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Uh, next item, I believe, is item 57, Vice Mayor. Move approval item 57. Second. A motion to second. Mr. Clark, do you wish to provide testimony on 57? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and, Mayor and Council Members. And as a citizen of Phoenix, I just want to thank the family of Detective Hobbs and all of the Phoenix police and the fire because they're just like the tax collectors sometimes. Everybody loves to hate them, but when we need them, they can't get there fast enough and they give their lives to protect us. And I, there's not, no expression in words, but all I can say is thank you as a citizen of Phoenix and thank you for keeping our, my family safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Gates. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Stan. Yes. Uh, next, I think we're on the new business, is that correct? Move to item 63. Second. Leonard Clark, second. We have a motion and a second on 63. Mr. Clark, would you provide testimony on 63? That is notice of the legally required public hearing on the property tax. I promise you, Mayor and Council and citizens of Phoenix, this is the last time I'm going to speak today, but I do hold it as a sacred honor. As you know, in China, <laughs> they have a different view of letting their citizens speak. Anyways, uh, I just want to thank you, uh, and I think it's a good state law because this property tax, I need to educate myself more and many of my fellow residents about what is our Phoenix property tax. And these two hearings that are coming up in June uh, in July where we're going to, it looks like, increase them. We all need to educate ourselves on it, our primary uh, tax, our secondary. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be right along with the rest of my fellow citizens watching this, what's happening, why will we probably be paying more in our property taxes, and without condemning, but we need to learn about them, myself included. I'll be studying it and hopefully can attend those next uh, two future meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Clark, for that testimony. So we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. 64. Vice Mayor? Mayor? Item. I'm sorry. Could, could I? Of course. Uh, city Manager, but I, I don't want the public. We're not raising property taxes. I haven't heard that as part of any of this process. Is that so? Mayor Councilman Williams, the answer, as everything is with property taxes, is complex. The property tax rate will not be raised, it will remain okay. at $1.82. Okay. The primary property tax will decrease and the secondary property tax will increase. I, but the, I, I but the tax know, rate is $1.82. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Just for further clarification. Vice Mayor. The actual vote on the rate isn't until July 2nd. This is not it. Mayor, Vice Mayor, that's correct. This simply is the state required action to set the hearing for July 2nd. All right. 
Next item, Vice Mayor 64. Uh, item, I might take item 64, 66, and 67. I think Move so. item 64, 66, and 67. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or members of the council? Any cards? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Item 65. Move item 65. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilwoman Gallego, you had comments on the proposed bus surface changes 2014? Yes. So I think this proposal is good news. We're going to be adding service in the avenue portion of our city um, in areas where we hear it regularly, and the Councilman Nokowski is nodding, he hears it as well, that um, we need more access to bus service, and we'll be adding uh, more regular service on Sundays. In December, I had a seizure and lost my license for a few months, and Sundays were incredibly hard to get around with the infrequent service, so I, I suspect that is the experience that everyone who is dependent on the public transit service has. And I also hear that in the future, we may be adding back some of the holidays, because I've spoken to many people, including some on public transit, who said the holiday schedule is much, much larger than the holiday schedule they get for their work schedule. So many individuals who work in retail in particular do not get off 12 holidays per year and have actually very busy days on those days. So I'm glad that we are moving towards better serving the people who are dependent on public transit. I think we, who, I, if I learned anything this year, it was that you, everyone should assume they may need the public transit system someday, that it could happen to anyone and we ought to build a service that allows people to get to their job and their family on a regular basis and will create a more successful city. So very good news in item 65. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman. Great comments. Council, Councilman Gates. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, while I appreciate the additional service that's being provided uh, on this item, we're not taking away any service in District 3, but we're requiring an additional transfer for folks. And so, Mayor, if I could just get assurance from public transit that we're going to do everything we can to uh, make the, the time of that transfer as short as possible, and then also providing shelters as we have a day here, you know, in the nearing 110 degrees, that, that we're doing what we can to provide shelters in these places where there's additional transfers. Mayor, Mem Councilman Gates, um, yes, I would like to tell you that uh, we will be looking at that time point in the transfer area, um, and that's at Cactus and Cave Creek where uh, most people have been able to make a one-seat ride, and now they'll make a two-seat ride, so we'll be making looking closely at that to um, shorten up that time frame. On the second part of your uh, comment, Councilman, you talked about the shade. Um, we currently are doing a shade study, uh, looking at all of our bus stops that do not have shade today. We're evaluating each one of them. We'll be to the Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee in the fall to present that information to the Council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman Gates. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. We'll now move on to the planning and zoning portion of our uh, agenda. The first item on that uh, portion of the agenda is item number 68, temporary fencing and golf courses uh, text amendment. I'm gonna, can I get staff recommendation before the public hearing or is it after public hearing or does it not matter? 